Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video I want to have a quick look at some of the updates to Flowify. So I've looked at Flowify previously, it's a really nice add-on that allows you to place objects onto a relatively complex surface really easily. If you haven't seen the video on that, there's a link in the description. And there has been a recent update to this, this is in Flowify 1.2. So if you haven't downloaded that, go back to Blender Marketplace and download at least 1.2 or beyond if there's a new version. And what this is going to do, which I think is really, really powerful, is if I bring in a cylinder, let's up this to, I don't know, 128, and then bring it up, we can now flowify onto cylindrical objects. Now there are some limitations to this. Firstly, the cylindrical object needs to not have a bottom and top face. So we do need that because otherwise flowify can't tell where everything is. But this is really easy to put the faces back later or alternatively you could start with the whole object and then just select those faces that you want here shift and d to duplicate them p and then by selection so now you've got your main object in the middle and then your object on the outside which you're then going to hide at a later point so it's really easy to deal with but what this is going to allow us to do if i come into my cylinder that doesn't have the top is we can now firstly click on Flowify and create a grid from the target surface and this will work on a cylinder which is amazing so that will be created there now what I'm actually going to do is move this off to the side because you can move this around again just like we could before so let's rotate that on the Y by 90 and then G and then Z that down so we've got something similar to look at and we could place it pretty much exactly on the same point on the Z axis and this allows me to put anything I want onto this surface and it's going to be placed on this cylinder. So let's just shift an A and bring in, I don't know, let's say a cube and we're just going to move this over to here. Now, as before, you are going to need to, let's scale that in, have some additional geometry for this to be able to curve around. I'm just going to apply the rotation scale and then control and R to up the edge loops on that so that we've got something for this to work on. And what I'll do is just create a few of those. So let's just click here, add a modifier and an array, and we will do that in the Y direction. And we'll add a couple of those in. Now, I've obviously made this very basic just so it's on one side, but let's just grab all of these and G and then X those forward. So this is gonna be a bit easier to see. So the first thing that we need to note is that when we do this, so it's exactly the same as we've normally done in Flowify, we click the object, Flowify, and then we need to importantly select the top left hand corner. It doesn't like it being done on the right. You can do, but it starts flipping things around, so I wouldn't. Top left hand corner is what you want to select. Whereas in Flowify on a non-cylindrical object, you can select any corner you want. So make sure you've got that top left hand corner, and then it will start showing where you can select this too. Now this is actually having a slight problem showing it, so I'm gonna actually hide the original cylinder and do that again. So Flowify, select the top left hand corner, now you can see it's really easy. Now what's so powerful about this in my mind is that you have the option of where to stop and start this. So for example, if I select here, you'll notice that it has Flowified everything from that point onwards. So that was the beginning, our top left hand side and then it's flurified around to the right hand side basically going that way which is really nice because it meant I could control where this started and stopped which could be very important for what you're doing likewise if we do that again flurify and then select that corner and then do over here again we've controlled where these are placed now sometimes this won't matter very much to you at all, but if you've got something where, let's say, shift and A, mesh, and we're bringing in a cube, and this is gonna be some sort of object on the side of a building, I don't know, something like this. And let's say we want that there, and oh, actually let's bring back the other object. So we've got our main object here and the one we're flyifying on, so let's do that. And then I'm gonna take my object here S and then Z, control and A and apply the scale, go into edge mode and I'm gonna select there and there, not that one, and control and B and bevel this. So maybe this is being a fuel canister, that's H to hide that, 
and I want these placed on this fuel canister. So this time I'm going to G and then Y these over to the left hand side because I just want to see where they're starting and then I can Flurify, click that corner there and I want them to start, let's say, here. And now we've got those placed. What's great about this, as before, is we can keep editing this. So I could change this down to, let's say, four or three if I wanted to. And then we could G and then Y that, and it will move this on that object as well. We could also G and Z and move those down. Uh, it's just so powerful that we can change this so easily and have this perfectly placed on it for those details. And if I just bring back my original cylinder, and then we'll actually just hide the cylinder that we're doing this on, you can see how great this is in terms of just adding things and little details that we might want. I could also, let's Alt and X and mirror that, and now we've got that at the bottom as well. It's just so fast. And I just can't think of another add-on that does this as well. Someone also asked, can we just delete these when we're done with them? Yes, you can just delete that if you want to and delete that when you want to. But if it was me, I would just H to hide that so that we can always come back and change this later. Now, an extra thing that this does, I've got a tankard here. So I want to demonstrate another point. So if I go into face mode and let's select all of those faces. I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. Shift and D, P and separate by selection. And then I'll just H to hide this so we've only got that there. Let's Flurify and create the source grid. And then we're just going to R90 and then let's G and then Z and then bring that over here. So say so I want something like some additional detailing around this. And because I've already made this object, this is gonna be a little bit annoying. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but let's go through this. So I'm gonna shift an A, mesh, and then bring in a cylinder. Let's Alt and A. I've used machine tools for that. There's videos on how to use machine tools in the description. Let's R, X and 90 and then let's scale this down to some sort of detailing there. I'm just going to then S and then Y to make that longer and I'm just going to make it exactly up to the edge. So let's just go into edge mode, select that edge, GB, click then Y and then click on there and then we will mirror that across to the other side. That was using mesh machine but you could do that manually with symmetrize or do it just by hand. So let's G and then Z that up. I'm gonna Alt X to then mirror that across the original object. And then I'm gonna Shift and A, Mesh, and I'm gonna bring in, what should we use for this? Let's bring in a, another cylinder. Let's up this to 128, R, Y, and then 90. And then let's bring that into the center. In fact, let's Alt and A to make it perfectly in the center. And then let's S and X that in. S and then Z that to make that a little bit elongated and cool. And then I'm gonna go into edge mode and then control and B that. Oh no, let's apply the scale first. I think that could look pretty good. Now, we do need to remember, because we haven't done it already, let's go into edge mode, control and R, and then I'm just gonna type in 128. That should be enough, maybe not. Let's just do two. Five, six to make it really smooth. And then for this object, we're going to need to break this up slightly. So for this, I, you could do this manually. I'm just gonna actually just go into Q and use hard ops and the dice tool. We want in that direction. And I'm gonna click B to turn that into a box. Let's go somewhere there. Right, there we go. So that, just so you know, added in a lot more vertices so we can modify this. Then let's shift A, mesh, and then bring in a Quad sphere, Alt A again, and then let's S that to somewhere there, and S and Z, so that's gonna be like a gem in the middle. Awesome. How dense is this? Let's control and one to add a subdivision. So let's click, 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 and then flurify. Oh, I've got this the wrong way around. Do notice, so mine is set to yellow, so it tells us where the inside face and the outside face are. So I rotated this round, so I've actually got to look at this from this side. So that is something that's really important. It automatically shows this. That is the same as if we came up here and wanted to show our 
face orientation at the bottom. So basically it turns it on temporarily as we've got that. If I go out of Flurify and come back here, face orientation's off. So it does this automatically. So because I didn't check this earlier, let's just SX and minus one to bring that round to the other side. But it's quite good. It gives you an opportunity to show that. So click, 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 because you can do multiple objects at the same time. Flurify, and then I want that one there. And then we want the gem to be at the front. So I'm gonna call this the front. So I'm gonna go to the back and have it start there. There we go, we've got my gem at the front. We can now H to hide this and bring back our original cylinder. Now at this point, this looks great. Now I did make an error here. So let's have a quick look at that. The first thing is that I want this to be a 3D printable object because I generally do things for 3D printing. And for that, we've now got these points there. So we've got this face. We don't want that. So I'm gonna go into face mode and delete that face. And I want to do the same thing on the other side. So let's delete that face as well. Now, what has happened here, if we have a look at this object, is that this has actually created a manifold object. These joins have actually been merged together because they're so perfectly placed. I literally got that right dead on the edge. Now let's go into edge mode and let's just alt select that and let's just G and then Y that the tiniest bit off so it's not perfect. And we can see now that we have a tiny, tiny gap and everything isn't merged together. Now we can actually come over to our Flurify options. Notice this is not clicking on the original object. This is clicking on the Flurified object and we can have a look at where we can bring this together. So you'll notice there's a side merge distance. And if I scroll this up, you can change when this merges on the side. So just that small little tweak from zero up, and we've now merged all of those together. So this has been really thought about in terms of what the designer has created to make this really functional. Now, finally, I just want to emphasize that this doesn't just work on perfect cylinders. Let's bring in my glass that I've got here. So let's bring that over to the side. So this again is a cylinder, but it's got a much more undulating shape. So we'll do exactly the same thing here. We're gonna just add in a band that's gonna go around this. So click, Flurify, create source grid from target. Now that will take a bit longer because it's more complex. And then the last time we did talk about the fact that this will do this on the maximum, we might want to set this so it just does it on the average. But that's up to you. Again, we talked about that in the last video. So let's just G and Y that across. I'm not actually gonna bother repositioning everything here. I don't think it's really needed. And you'll notice how dense this is because this is a very dense mesh. So once again, I'm gonna shift an A mesh and bring in a cylinder. Let's Alt and A to bring it in place. Let's R and X 90 degrees. And then let's just scale that down so it's nice and small. And then I'm gonna go into edge mode Select my edge here with Alt click, G and then Y that across, and then we will G, B to snap base, Y and snap it to that outer edge so it's perfect. And then I can Alt and X to symmetrize, or you can do that manually. And again, exactly the same process. We need to go into edge mode, Control and R, and then scroll up or 256 or whatever you want to do to make it smooth object mode, and then I'm going to Flurify, Flurify, top left-hand corner, again, checking that we've got the correct face. So top left-hand corner, and then click the same here. And then we've got that ring at the moment, it's right at the bottom. So we could actually have loads of these along the bottom edge. So I could G and then bring that down if I wanted to, or I could have this higher around the top lip. It's just so cool that I can do whatever I want with this really, really quickly and easily. And then let's once again add an array. So add modifier array, and then let's space that up a little bit. So we could have that there. And again, do I want that here? Or do I want that down here? Or do I want that multiples of both? I could just shift D and then X, bring that up and do exactly the same thing, Flurify click and then click and then let's G and then move that up. Honestly, I think this is amazing. 
I think this is one of the favourite add-ons that I've purchased in maybe a year or more just for how easy this is to use and how quickly it's being developed to do new things. If you are interested in Flurify and haven't purchased it already, there's an affiliate link in the description which will cost you no extra money but will give a little bit of money to the channel, which is always really appreciated. And if you do want to support the channel further, please hit that like button. YouTube seems to be sharing videos of smaller channels a little bit less recently as they've changed the algorithm, so any likes and comments really, really help. Have a great day, guys.